Because we're going over texture progress nodes and how they're updated, the basic project is already set up. Here's a the gameplay, there's no UI or texture progress set up, but the game is set up. You hold down the mouse and you try to get the largest power before releasing the mouse. If you go over 8, then you will get a weak shot and then you might as well have like tried to release it like 7 or something. So you're trying to get the timing right before you release. Okay, so that's pretty much it right there. We got a little town map just for replacing where that thing is. So right here, we have the player. If you put the player anywhere on this, that means we will be put right there. And then we have our shoot target scene. So what happens is you uh, hold down the mouse and a timer ticks up. Each time it ticks up, the power increases. And after you release it, then the uh, thing, then something shoots off and it goes off in that direction wherever the mouse is pointing. And right here, that's where the uh, every time the timer ticks, it will tick up that power by one. This creates shot functions where we actually shoot off the shot. And uh, yeah, we instance it, then we have it go off in the mouse clicking direction. Yeah. Okay, and that's pretty much it for that. And right here, this just, uh, it just gets a, a velocity and it gets friction based on that velocity. And so like whenever we set velocity, we always set the friction too. And yeah, so for some reason I didn't use this right here. This could definitely be improved. So that way it's more consistent. But yeah, and uh, right here, I have the tile map. And yeah, so that's pretty much it. So the tile map we already went over, it just replaces the player. And this one, uh, there's a little globals variable called shot that's in here. Basically all shot is just a boolean that's held by globals. It just, it's initialized to false because we haven't shot yet. And uh, if we, if it's uh, not, if we haven't shot yet, then it'll shoot. But if we have, it won't shoot basically because it gets set to true right here. But that's about it. That's all we need to go over for that. So that's the entire project. What we want to do today is we want to go to the UI and add a texture progress node. So what I'm going to do is add a little HBox container and then add a texture progress under it. And right here, we don't need to change anything. We want it left to right, so that's good. And we're just going to add the textures. So there's an under texture. And in your project, you'll have a texture called power bar back. So that's what you put on the under slot. So the under slot will just have all these black balls and stuff and you you want to like uh, once it goes through the progress it'll be lit up to red so that way you know how much power you have so right here go back to that same textures folder and look load in the power bar and boom as you can see you can't see it yet because it's not loaded in you want to make sure that uh, since we have eight of these you want to make sure you do eight they're all evenly spaced so it will be it'll go up correctly and let's see, see when you put a value in, you have three, three balls. Three red balls, five black ones. Okay, there you go. Okay, so that's how you set up the texture progress node from a scene view. Now we need to figure out how we could get the value uh, changed just from our script. So we want to update automatically from the shoot target.gd part. We want to uh, go from this, so whenever we change power, we're gonna set, we're gonna change the value of this uh, texture progress right here. So we're gonna set it to one, then two, then three, then four, then five, then six, then seven, then eight. And if we hold too long, it goes back to one. That's how it's supposed to work. Okay, so let's make a new scene for that. We're gonna make a singleton. Okay, so we're gonna make a little node. Boom. So this is what the node is. So I'll name it events and we're gonna add a little script to it. It'll just go in the res folder, save events, make it go in that same res folder. Okay, and now we're just gonna delete everything that's inside it, save it, go to project, go to auto load, then load it as a singleton. Right here, events.tscene, and then say add, and as you can see, we already have the globals as a singleton. That's why we're able to access the shot variable from anywhere. Okay, now we have that. Since now we have an event singleton, we're gonna make a signal called power changed and then pass in a power int. Okay, so uh, now that we have that, we're gonna save it again. And for the, in the UI and the texture progress, we could add a little script. So let's attach a script. It'll be saved in the scenes folder, textureprogress.gd. Okay, right here we'll say, we're gonna call that singleton events dot 
connect. So we're going to call the connect function of events and then pass in power changed. Reference uh, this script and then call a function that we don't have yet. So we're going to say um, change power. And right here, this is what it's going to do. Well, it's not, not what it's going to do, but just what we're going to call it. So make a func called change power, pass in power. Make sure it's uh, of type int, so basically type check it. So that way it could give us an error message if we pass in anything else that's not int. And then we'll just set the, so there's a value attached to a texture progress node that's contained in everything. Just to like show you, I'll say self, whoops, self dot value. See, it's a property of uh, texture progress. So then we can just say, have it set to that power. Okay, so now we got pretty much everything set. We could uh, delete these comments right here. And boom, that's all we have. Just five lines of code, pretty four lines of code. And uh, yeah, so let's go down to our um, thing. So right now we have uh, the signal connected, but we don't have it to where it's updating because we're not emitting the signal. And one thing that before I start, I'm gonna center it. It just looks nicer that way. Okay, now back to this. So we're gonna go shot shoot target. So anytime in here, anytime we update power, we wanna update it in the texture progress node. What I like to do is since we're gonna do that a lot, I like to make sure that it's always updated. So set power, say set power, uh, let's pass in the power of type int and uh, power, power equals the power. So uh, instead of power equals the power, let's do self dot power. So that way we know it's a property of this scene, and that way this is the parameter. But yeah. Okay, so self dot power is equal to power. That's cool. And then we're gonna uh, call event the event singleton, and then instead of uh, connect, we're gonna call emit signal. Go power changed, and then pass in power. So that way both of these are updated at the same time. So anytime counts update, we also want to do that. So uh, well, anytime power is update ever. So uh, power is equal to zero. So instead of that, let's do go set power zero. And power plus equals to one. Let's do set power power plus one. So that way it gets incremented every time correctly, and it calls that. So and then yeah, and we could just replace both of these with ones. Boom, boom, got it. We don't need to print anymore. It's gonna be updated and bam. Watch, it's being updated. Boom. Now it's going all the way across, it's hitting that wall. And yeah, and we can see it up here and we don't have to print anything. We're just like showing it the texture progress right there. Boom. So that is pretty motherfucking cool right there. Yeah, it's very simple setup. We're just like, uh, anytime we update power, we're just uh, calling the signal. It goes through this events bus and then comes up the other side, goes into the UI thing, and then goes into this script right here, and then it calls this function called change power. It's pretty fucking motherfucking sweet. It's all asynchronous. I hope you all have a wonderful motherfucking day. Peace out.